Okay, let's talk about uh, this, uh, this part here is finding trig ratios given a theta that's greater than 90 degrees. And we're going to be talking about special angles. If you want to talk about non-special angles, uh, like 15, 20 degrees, uh, this isn't the video to watch currently. Um, I'll make another one when uh, we get there. But for now, it's just becoming associated with uh, reference angles and how we use and apply reference angles to find out our trigonometric ratios. So, in this case, okay, so I have an angle up here drawn, it's in standard position, and the theta I have drawn here is that theta equals 135 degrees, uh, if you can see that, I hope you can see that. So it says theta is 135 degrees. Now, our trigonometric functions are always based off of your x-coordinate divided, or your, yeah, your x um, uh, length divided by the radius, okay, and in this case we're going to assume we're on a unit circle of one, we're just going to go with that. Um, so essentially what happens is if I take a perpendicular, okay, and, and this radius is one, okay, if I were to take a look at this and drop a perpendicular down, okay, we know that that's 90 degrees. Remember how the cosine is the x-coordinate, okay, divided by the r-coordinate, and the, or the r, which is the radius, which gives you essentially the, um, the, the ratio for this trig function, okay? I want to use this to figure out what is it that when I have uh, some theta being greater than 90 degrees, what is my trig ratio going to be? So, taking a look at this, okay, I come up here and I've got this sine theta. And the sine theta, I want to know what is sine theta, okay? But I want to know what is the sine of 135 degrees. What is the, so, uh, the cosine of 135 degrees? What is the tangent of 135 degrees? Cotangent of 135, the secant of 135 degrees, and the cosecant of 135 degrees. Well, if you want, sure, you can memorize all of these. Um, but there's a quicker and easier way, and that's just to remember your reference angles. Remember, a reference angle must always be between 0 and 90 degrees. And we're talking about special angles, so the ones between 0 and 90 are going to be 0. 30, 60, 45, and 90. Those are our special ones. So essentially you have to remember five angles for what we're doing here, and then we're going to start applying some other things to them. So, first thing I want you to note here is look at your drawing and always make one, okay? And in the problems they'll probably say, what is it for 135 degrees? Draw the picture. Because wherever the terminating side is, it's going to tell you what quadrant you're in. So this is my terminating side. It's in quadrant two, and I'm going to label that. And the reason I'm going to label that for quadrant two is because if we think about this in the form of all students take calculus, okay? This right here talks about how all the trigonometric ratios are positive. The only one that's positive in here is sine and it's reciprocal, which is cosecant, and every other function is negative. And how is that important to me? Well, I'd come over here right now, and before I even start to calculate any value for its ratio, I can put its sine in there. Sine is going to be positive, cosine is going to be negative, tangent is going to be negative, cotangent is going to be negative, secant is going to be negative, and cosecant is going to be positive. So right now, before I've done anything, I've got four of my functions that are negative, and that's a good start. Okay? What can I do after that? The next thing I'm going to do systematically is go to, okay, I've got memorized the sine of... Uh, 35, uh, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and 0 degrees. Those are kind of like the stable ones that you're always going to have memorized because they are special angles and they will give you exact values. So, for this particular one, okay, remember that it's the x over the r. So, this angle is really measured, okay, so when I take a look at this, this ratio is really based off of this x here divided by this r. And when we talk about those ratios, this theta here, okay, notice the x isn't over here, but this is part of the angle. So what I have to use is something called the reference angle. And the reference angle is a angle that is formed between the terminating side and the x-axis of your angle. So in this case, when I take a look at this, I am actually going to use this angle, okay, that little angle in here, right here. Okay, that little bit of information is what I'm going to need to help me figure out what this is. And the way I do that, okay, is I think about what happens if I transpose this, this triangle and I put it over here. Well, guess what? Guess what quadrant it's in? 
it's in quadrant one. And this angle right here would be in quadrant one. So it, it'd be the same exact thing. So that's why that reference angle is important. So from here, we already have the signs covered. I'm just gonna figure out what is this angle. And we call this reference angle, we use theta prime. So theta prime in this case, okay, is going to be 180 degrees minus 135 to figure out the dis distance between the two. And in this case, we get 45 degrees. Now, once I have that, as opposed to thinking of this as the cosine of 135, I'm now gonna think of it as the sine of 45 degrees. So the sine of 135 is the same thing as the sine of 45. So the sine of 45 degrees is root two over two. I have it memorized and so should you at this point. The cosine of 135 is going to be equal to the negative of the cosine of 45 degrees. The cosine of 45 degrees is root two over two, but notice how I put my negatives already in so I don't need to really think about it. And I get root two over two. Tangent is negative one. Cotangent is one, okay. It is the sine divided by the cosine, root two over two divided by uh, negative root two over two, which is negative one. Secant is going to be, in this case, right, if we take a look at it, take the reciprocal of it and we get negative root two, okay? And then the cosecant is also gonna be just root two because the reciprocal of two root two, if I were to do it, is two over root two, multiply top and bottom by root two, and you're left with two root two over two, so that reduces to just root two. So this final answer here is this. So that's cosecant and cosine and tangent of 135 degrees. So I hope that helps with what you're doing. Um, the important thing here is to go through a process. And the process is make a drawing, figure out what quadrant you're in so you can assign the, the sign that's going to go with the trig function, find out the reference angle, find the trigonometric ratio for that reference angle, and then they will be equivalent. Okay, and then that's it. And that's how you solve these problems. So let's do one more here. So let's do something like, I don't know, let's, let's make it large. Let's make a really big number. And let's say I want to know for something that's like uh, 1,250 degrees. Okay? So that seems pretty logical. We'll just do a huge, massive number. Let's draw a picture. Okay? So if I draw a picture here, all right, I can come up here and I can think about going around this circle until I get all the way there, okay? But at this point, before I draw this picture, I want to do something else. And what I want to find is a coterminal. So I don't want to draw this so I have all these circles going around. I could, and usually teachers will demonstrate it for like smaller angles, but for 1,250 degrees, I really don't want to keep drawing because it's going to get massive. You're going to see these circles going around. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find, okay, so find a coterminal. between zero degrees, so let that x be between zero degrees and 360 degrees. So I'm gonna find a coterminal. The way you find coterminals is if it's, if it's a value greater than zero, you just keep subtracting from 360 from the value you create until you get a number between uh, 360 and zero. So in this case, we all know, okay, that 1080, I hope you all know, is three times around the circle. So I'm just gonna subtract 1080. So 1250 minus 1080. So I'm just gonna show my work off to the side. So 1250 minus 1080. So that's zero, one, 15, so seven, so 170. So I get 170 degrees, okay? So taking a look at this one in particular, 170 degrees, if I were to draw this in here, okay? That is not going to give me one of my trigonometric ratios that I have memorized. And, and the reason I, I wanted to go through this one very quickly is, is the idea that, okay, it doesn't give me a, an exact trig function. And if it doesn't give me an exact trig function, it's something that you will have to use a calculator for. So we're going to go back to one that's going to give us an exact trig function. So instead of being 1250, I'm gonna take off some degrees from that so we can get something else, and I'm gonna make that 1220, okay? So let's make this 1,220 degrees. So we're gonna subtract 1,220, we're gonna minus 180 from it. So when I go ahead, and, oh, I'm sorry, let's make that 1230. So let's make this 1230. We're gonna go ahead and that's a one. <clears throat> so 
I get 13 here, uh, we get a 5, we get 0, uh, oops, sorry, 1080, and we get 150 degrees. So I now have my reference angle, so 1,230 degree, uh, 230 degrees, I'm going to draw a picture for it. So let's go ahead and draw that picture. And the picture I'm going to use is just the coterminal. Is it to, is it going to be the same thing? Remember, coterminals end in the same spot. And when I'm talking about drawing an angle between X and the terminating side, I don't care how many times that terminating side went around the circle. It could have gone around a million times. It's still going to end at the same exact spot for that coterminal between 0 and 360. So that's why we use it. So let's draw that angle in. It's 150 degrees. So there it is. So that's going to be my coterminal. So once I find my coterminal, what quadrant am I in? So step one, draw a picture. Step two, quadrant. I'm in quadrant two. Okay, step three, that allows me to come up here and say that sine of, um, in this case, 150 is, e is positive. Cosine 150 is negative. Tangent of 150 is negative. Secant of 150 is going to be negative, cosecant of 150 is going to be negative and uh, positive, and cotangent of 150 is going to be negative. So now I have all my signs, and the last thing I have to do here for this particular one is just simply come up with what my values are, and that's based off of the reference angle. So the reference angle, I'm going to take as an equation 2, I'm going to do that 180 minus the the uh, theta again. So I'm going to figure out that this portion right here is 180 minus 150. So my theta prime we use is going to be 30 degrees. So I come up here and I go, okay, what is the sine of 30 degrees? The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So the sine of 150 is positive 1 half. The cosine of 150, thinking about this as the cosine of 30 degrees, use that reference angle, is going to be root 3 over 2. Tangent of 150 is of 30 degrees in this case is going to be root 3 over 3, so it's negative. So negative root 3 over 3. Secant. So secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And we just take the reciprocal of this. So it's going to be negative 2 root 3 all over 3. Okay? Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, which is just positive 2. And cotangent is the reciprocal of my tangent, so negative root 3 is the answer. So I hope that helps with any sort of work you're doing, but remember, draw a picture, find your quadrant, find your reference angle, find the trig function of your reference angle, and they will be equivalent.